Hiya guys, and welcome to the very first episode of Character Crafting. So I love creating characters and doing all the concept work for them, building them from just one singular idea into this fully fleshed out human and or other living being. It's honestly one of my favorite things about being an artist. It's incredibly time consuming, but it's so fulfilling. And when I asked you guys what kind of videos you wanted to see me try, character design won out by a landslide. So here we are. I think it'll be fun to break down a character and show you the creation behind them, the inspirations, the different versions of them that existed before this. I don't know, I always enjoy seeing that sort of thing, so hopefully you will too. In future videos, I'll try to take you through characters I'm currently designing so you can actually follow along instead of what I'm doing here. Who knows, maybe this can help someone else with their own characters. I may expand this to other copyright characters in the future, like I redesign them based on their personality, the world they live in, that sort of thing. I think it'll be interesting just to see what I can make from it, but for now I'll stick to my own characters, just to warm up at least. So I figured who better to start off with than Ash, my main OC, one could argue my very first OC. She's basically my mascot, she's the face of a lot of my content, so she seems like a pretty good start. Now I won't go all the way back for her creation, Ash is a very special character, I've had her since I was little, or you know, well, little-er and this video would be super long, so I'm just gonna stick with when I came up with the whole project evolution concept, so that's only going back a few years, give or take. Now when I decided I was gonna do this whole online artist thing, I knew I wanted a main OC, someone recognizable to serve quite literally as a mascot of sorts. And I knew I had this character that had been sitting on the back burner, so I decided I'll use her, and since I knew I was gonna be drawing her a lot, you know, she's the main character of this comic I'm working on, I knew I needed to enjoy writing and drawing her. So I figured to start revamping her to fit this new narrative, I need to pick other characters I like, figure out what traits I like from them, and then I'll go from there. I mentioned this before in a previous video that Laura Croft was a huge influence on Ash, but Laura Croft was actually the second biggest inspiration. The first was Zegram Gart from Rogue Galaxy. Shut up, I'm not obsessed with this game, I can stop talking about it whenever I want. Both of these characters are more of the calm collected type, both are very knowledgeable, both can be very hard to read, they keep their true thoughts pretty close to the best, and they're both flipping awesome. Zegram is much more sarcastic and condescending than Laura, but that varies depending on what game she's in. Anyway, those were the traits I started out with. I also knew I want Ash to have an accent, even if you never actually hear her talk. For a long time, Ash was actually Hispanic. She was going to have a really strong Hispanic accent, be from Los Angeles, that sort of thing. But when I started writing for the comic, literally the draft right before I started posting the comic, I was just like, you know what? I really want her to be British. Oh darn it, now I need to rewrite the comic. Again. That's always fun, so in the span of about a day or so, Ash went from a spunky, hot-headed Mexican girl from LA to a stubborn, cold-hearted rich girl from Britain. This is why the comic took so long to come out. And yes, this did happen in between designs. The very first drawings of Ash on my DeviantArt were done while Ash was still from LA, so there's that. So I started with her face. I mean, that's usually what I start with. So again, I needed to enjoy drawing her, so I made her face just things I like drawing or things I like on other characters. Bigger lips, some kind of facial marking like a beauty mark or freckles. The eyes I took a bit of time on. For a long time, Ash was nearly the exact opposite of when I came up with her, at least in this format. So her eyes went from big eyes to match the more lighthearted mood of the story she was in to sharper, more heavy-lidded eyes. Perfect for glaring at your enemies. I remember playing around with the lids a lot. For a long time, Ash just had sharp sort of cat eyes, but I was never 100% happy with that. So while drawing expressions, I gave her these really tired eyes and that was it. I just thought those are her eyes. They're sharp, but they still give off that I'm so done and tired with your crap kind of look. So I actually designed both her outfit and her hair at the same time, but I'm gonna go ahead and focus on her hair first here. Never mind the color, cause that's like a whole other thing. Now, when I design characters, when I first rough out ideas for them, I just listen to songs on my phone on shuffle. I'll sketch out the first ideas I get before the song ends and then I'll move on to the next one. So those are the notes you see scribbled next to the designs there. But to focus back on her hair, I really love messy, layered, punk rock looking style, so that's what I was aiming for. 
I don't know if this is just me, but I cannot stand perfectly symmetrical characters. It just bothers me to no end. So I knew Ash would have her hair going off to one side, and I thought it won't be very practical for her to be fighting monsters and all with super long hair, so I just gave her shorter, more of a bob kind of cut. Plus, it just made things a little bit easier on me. So I played around with her little wisps of hair going this way and that way, and eventually I got into this sort of swoop kind of thing. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a swoop. You see on her bangs, it's a little swoop. That's what it is. Her hair started out super calm, even kind of straight. If you go back on my DA a little bit, you'll see a version of Ash before she was British with a straighter version of her hair. But in one of my drawing classes, I got super obsessed with motion lines, so Ash's hair just got kind of wild and now it's stuck like that. There are some people who love her hair and other people who cannot stand her hair, so have fun with that. So her outfit, again, I just focused on things that I like drawing. More military-inspired clothes, something kind of punky and asymmetric, and I came up with it pretty quick. The fourth design that I drew was actually the one I settled on. It was perfect, sharp, kind of military, with unnecessary straps and cutouts, and not perfectly mirrored on both sides. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you the others anyway. I'm gonna do it in a grayscale here, since at the time that I drew these, I didn't have any particular color scheme in mind. Again, her color came way later. In my mind, I was thinking of a bunch of other characters, Zegram and Laura, obviously, but there were a few others, like Ryoku from Kill la Kill, Black Widow from the Marvel movies, others I can't even remember anymore. Some pieces of her outfit I basically just stole from other things. This is how you become a successful art thief, guys. Her belts I got from the old Vocaloid designs, those dangling suspenders and things. Yep, stole that. Her boots literally stolen from Zegram's default outfit. I was gonna make them thigh highs like his, but then I couldn't do those cutouts. The pants I stole and modified a lot from, I think it was Saints Row 3, those goth pants. They were super baggy though, but I didn't like them baggy on her because then you couldn't see her boots, so yeah. That's all I remember stealing anyway, at least for the design that she currently has. Her other designs, you can tell there's some parts stolen from Kill a Kill, there's a few stolen from Black Widow. It's kind of funny looking back at some of her first designs, her current look does have some similarities with her old look, but at the same time it feels completely different. By the way, once you finish this video, I did upload another video of me redrawing Ash's old design, or at least a culmination of her old designs. Going through my old sketchbooks from middle school and high school, I kept tweaking her look every single time that I drew her, like nothing stayed the same and it annoyed me so much, so I just mashed them all together and that's what you're gonna get. So I'm sure some of you may be wondering what the deal is with Ash. Why does she have those little fox bits? What's the deal with the blue magical flame things? Why does she sometimes have fox bits and sometimes she doesn't? Well, that all has to do with the world that she lives in. From the very beginning, Ash was always a superhero, or something close to that anyway. Before, she was just really good at fighting. You know, very nimble and agile, again, inspired by Laura Croft. But after some time, I got really into the idea of adding in a more magical element. In fact, the very first drafts of Project Evolution were much more of a magical girl kind of story. I know, total 180 here. Ash literally had a transformation and was part cat, not part fox. I know, it's so generic, I'm sorry. That design didn't last very long though. I don't even know if I have any drawings of that left. But I was never really happy with the entire concept of this world Ash lived in and her story, so I never really did anything with it. I kept doodling her for years and years, but it never really went beyond, you know, sketches here and there. I tried drafting up some stories for her back then, like back in middle school, but I never got past a few pages. But when I got into high school, I had to write a research paper on an endangered animal, and I, you know, I just picked the arctic fox. You know, Ash's design did have a fox tail, and while writing it, somehow I stumbled onto the mythology behind the kitsune, and I remember thinking, huh, that's pretty neat. And then I remembered this old magical girl story I had and thought maybe instead of all this made up magic nonsense, I can just use mythology instead. And that's when Ash became a kitsune in the middle of me writing a very serious research paper in biology class. I literally drafted some ideas for Project Evolution that day and bam, here we are. I went from a hot-headed magical girl cat to an aloof, cold-hearted kitsune who lives in Britain and also happens to be rich. Stay in school, kids. You never know when inspiration will strike. That's about all I can tell you for Ash, at least, you know, right now. 
In the future, maybe I'll delve further into who she is, but if I do it now, it'll be filled with spoilers, so I'm just gonna go ahead and save all of that. So I hope you all enjoyed that little escapade into my creative madness or process or whatever it is you want to call it. Sorry if it was a little convoluted, this is my first time doing this, and Ash is not exactly the most straight line, black and white kind of character. She took a lot of twists and turns during her development, that's all I'm gonna say. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, maybe I can do Ray next, or Crow, or maybe even some of the characters that were cut from the comic. That'll probably never see the light of day again, anyway. That's fun. Anyway, you guys let me know what you'd like to see me try. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoy my work, I do have a bunch of other videos you might like. None like this, at least at the moment, because I'm still working on it. I do offer commissions, since people have been asking. I also have a Patreon, a Redbubble, and a coffee if you don't mind throwing some spare change at some college kid who has no idea what they're doing. And a big thank you to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon or by buying commissions. You help me do what I love and not live in a box. If you're interested in seeing more of Ash, Project Evolution is available for free on Topastic. So maybe you can check it out if you have the time. You don't have to though, I mean, it's just if you wanna. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.